brought to you by the National University of Singapore in celebration of SG50. Singapore aspires to be a modern and technologically advanced society. And it needs more innovative young citizens with the necessary skills to speed up its transformation. In the next 50 years, the city-state will grow more talent and capabilities in the fields of science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Science and engineering education has always been a key pillar in Singapore's growth strategy. Back in the 60s to 80s, rapid industrialization was Singapore's heartbeat. It created employment, fueled the economy. Education was geared towards producing engineers to accelerate this progress. The demand for engineers was high, so uh, you see a lot of uh, students all vying for engineering. Needless to say, you know, through the forces of uh, demand and supply, engineers are actually one of the better paid, if not the best paid, uh, professions in town. Lim Soon Hock was among the first 150 electrical engineering students who graduated from the then University of Singapore. After graduation, he worked as an engineer in the Ministry of Defence for five years. His rigorous training equipped him to excel in his job, which involved maintaining, retrofitting and designing defence systems. And at that point in time, I would say that uh, you know, the respect for the engineering profession was very high. The kind of work that you do is very visible. You know, building roads, building houses, getting yourself, you know, involved in the manufacturing processes. Today, engineers are still active, but they tend to be in the background, what I call the invisible, you know, movers and shakers of the economy. For those unable to secure a coveted place in the university's new engineering faculty, other education opportunities were available. Ivan Neo was sponsored by his employer, Singapore Airlines, to pursue a diploma in aeronautical and mechanical engineering in the late 1970s. The apprentice's education at the Singapore Polytechnic, together with his on-the-job training, turned him into a licensed aircraft maintenance engineer. The syllabus was uh, rigorous and comprehensive. The training itself, of course, gave a good uh, basic grounding in the engineering principles and also those related to aircraft. We also have practical training. I remember that we had to dismantle a small engine and then put it together again. Over time, Ivan rose up the corporate ladder. He now manages various teams, taking care of heavy maintenance, facilities development and marketing and sales. The engineering knowledge and the skills that I have gained give me a, a sense of discipline and a systematic approach to problem solving. From labour to capital intensive and eventually technology intensive, Singapore's industrial movement lasted for three decades. Things started to change in the 1990s. The metropolis shifted its emphasis from made in Singapore to invented in Singapore. In turn, its multifaceted science and engineering education began to focus on producing graduates who invent and innovate. Courses like the Design-Centric Program at the National University of Singapore or NUS increasingly emphasise creative design skills. In the 60s and 70s, I would say that uh, we are very much uh, trained in the classical mode of engineering. When you look at today's uh, engineering curriculum, actually our students are very lucky because it's very broad based. Students could even choose more interesting and uh, challenging disciplines such as those in information technology, robotics, nanotechnology, bioengineering. And in a way, I would say that would 
create a much more wholesome kind of environment for Singapore to start to build our future and our own the economy. Firing up students' passion for innovation is now the new normal in Singapore's knowledge-based economy. Science and engineering courses that offer multidisciplinary training multiplied. Initiatives such as the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program offered by the National University of Singapore and Nanyang Technological University sprouted. Back in 2003, Dr. Wong Lok Yuen applied for the six-month-long program and the experience kindled his passion for research. In my project, we need to pass uh, electricity through the la single layer of molecules in order to get their electrical behaviour that will enable us to make the future generation of electronic devices that is uh, maybe 15 to even 20 years ahead of time. The program actually allows me to have a front row seat to participate in cutting edge research. And through the program, I have a very good overview of how discoveries are being made. After graduation, Dr. Wong went on to pursue his PhD studies in physics at NUS. Today, he's a global product manager at an American multinational corporation. In applied materials, uh, where I'm working in, we actually dabble in uh, materials engineering at the molecular level. All this requires a very good understanding of physics and chemistry in order to be able to participate in it and also produce uh, uh, winning products for the customers and also for the industry. Good inventions need to be practical. Tertiary institutions began to provide internships, immersion and entrepreneurship experiences as part of the curriculum these are invaluable experiences for students like Kam Hui Juan. She enrolled in the Overseas Industry Training Program in her second year at Singapore Polytechnic. The six-week stint at Pratt & Whitney in Beijing was an eye-opener for this aeronautical engineering student. It is really an enriching experience. I learn a lot where I get to do hands-on practice or training on an actual aircraft power plant. Also, I get to interact with people from different backgrounds and culture where I get to learn or sharpen my uh, soft skills, such as my uh, human relations skills. This is very important when you come up to work, where especially now, as an engineer, I need to liaise with clients from different backgrounds and this is one of the key points that I think benefits me a lot. After graduating from Singapore Polytechnic, Hui Chuan got a degree in Mechanical Engineering at NUS in 2015. Today, the Corrosion Engineer at TriStar Industries is one of the few women in her profession and she hopes to see more gender equality and synergy. In the industry, people are looking uh, for more female engineers. I totally encourage male and female engineers to work together so we can come up with more thorough solutions where we will uh, consider uh, problems or issues from different aspects. The year-long NUS Overseas Colleges Program, or NOC, is another educational initiative that has impacted young lives. It immerses students in startups located in leading entrepreneurial and academic hubs of the world. At the same time, they attend entrepreneurship-related courses at prestigious partner universities. Wu Wenxiang, who studied computing at NUS, was one of the beneficiaries. When I went to the you know, Silicon Valley and got immersed in that environment, you know, immersed in the dynamic, fast-paced technology environment and to be, you know, study with people who are all you know, very intelligent and all passionate about technology, that's what really got me started thinking that you know, I maybe wanted to you know, do something a little different with my life. During his year in Silicon Valley, he was inspired to develop a live customer support chat software together with three other NOC students. They founded Zopim after returning to Singapore. The award-winning startup was acquired by an American software developer for 30 million US dollars in 2014. The NUS Overseas College took me from just a regular student going to school every day, thinking of graduation and then getting a job, to suddenly 
not wanting to get a job anymore and wanting to do something to change the world and like have a big impact in people's lives. So the program was definitely a key component in, in my entrepreneurial journey. Besides Silicon Valley, students in the NOC program have also been posted to Shanghai, Beijing, Stockholm and New York. Nearly one in ten of these students go on to set up a business. Many are attracting significant investor funding. While Singapore is a fast-growing entrepreneurial hub, it's also a hotbed for science and technology research. Invented in Singapore products are beginning to make waves around the world. And the city-state is educating a new generation of scientists and engineers to accelerate this pace. Over the past two decades, Singapore has grown into a reputable research and development hub in science and technology. Researchers at local tertiary institutions have played a key role in making discoveries and developing innovations that impact lives all over the world. Professor Ding Jik Ling from the Department of Biological Sciences at NUS is one such example. In the 1990s, she and a colleague invented a groundbreaking way of detecting bacteria using the components of horseshoe crab's blood. Her invention is now used worldwide to detect and remove bacteria from medical kits and drugs. Today, the professor is working on new research with four PhD students. They are discovering how our body's frontline immune system responds to infectious diseases and cancer. The research may innovate ways to modify our immune system to fight against cancer and infectious diseases. My students, they are extremely excited and keen about research. Some of my students are already training new and young uh, scientists. So it is like three, four tier learning, teaching. The students learn how to teach. Sustaining the local research community is vital to Singapore's R&D growth. As a facilitator and guide, Professor Ding ensures the students benefit from networking with big research laboratories worldwide. PhD student Winnie Chu has been working with the professor for a year at the Immunology Lab. She's testing if a certain protein in the cancer cell can kill the cancer itself. Winnie sees great value in her work and in learning from her mentor. She has a lot of experience in immunology research. We can consult her before we design our experiments. She also has a wide network. There's a lot of collaboration. These collaborators are usually doing things of different fields, so we can seek their advice from things for the other field as well. I hope to contribute to the cancer scientists in the community. We can find better treatment to, to cure the cancer in the future. In another lab at NUS, Professor Lim Chui Tik's research in bioengineering has radically changed the way cancer cells in blood are detected. The mechanical engineering trained professor has developed biomedical chips that can isolate low concentrations of cancer cells. They can even identify different types of cancer. With these chips, doctors could quickly prescribe a simple blood test, reducing the need to perform biopsies on patients. The benefit, timely and tailored medical treatment. Some of the most deadliest diseases such as cancer, cardiovascular diseases and diabetes uh, can no longer be handled by just clinicians uh, or biologists. Uh, in fact, they are extremely complex and will require a multidisciplinary team of uh, engineers, clinicians and biologists to effectively tackle them. In 2009, an NUS startup called ClearBridge Biomedics commercialised Professor Lim's biomedical chips. Today, hospitals across Asia, Europe and North America have adopted his technology for research purposes. 
uh, a senior clinician once said to me, uh, a doctor can treat one patient at, at a time, but uh, an engineer who develops a biomedical technology can enable treatment of uh, thousands of patients at any place at any one time. So I think this is what motivates me the most to get into this area. What motivates Professor Lim has also inspired Dr. Leong Man Chun, who has been working at Clearbridge for more than two years. In 2010, he decided to pursue his PhD after seeing how physical science and bioengineering research can save lives. Research to me is a very fulfilling uh, journey. Most of the time, uh, things would not work out for, for the first few attempts or even you know, for the first few years. But when it really does work out, I think um, you get really great satisfaction. The team hopes to develop more trailblazing innovations that can effectively diagnose and treat diseases such as malaria and cancer. I really hope that you know one day we'll be able to find a more effective treatment option for patients or even make cancer a preventable disease. Over at Nanyang Technological University or NTU, Tan Yang Fei from the School of Materials Science and Engineering is using nanotechnology to improve disease treatment. The PhD student wants to enhance the recovery of glaucoma patients who undergo eye operations. He works with professors who are inventors of this technology. My research can actually bring about a better standard and quality of living, especially for the elderly, so that they can go about with their daily lives and enjoy their life, especially in their silver years. Professor Subu Venkatraman from NTU's Ocular Therapeutic Engineering Centre and senior consultant Professor Tina Wong of Singapore National Eye Centre jointly designed the nanomedicine for the eye. The tiny nanoparticles can prevent scarring in the eye for 14 days after surgery. The team is researching ways to disperse the particles in a gel to prolong the effect of the treatment. This will improve the success rate of glaucoma surgery for patients. The team plans to commercialize the suspension in the future. Glaucoma is a disease which cannot really be reversed. You know, so it leads, leads to um, blindness if it is not treated. So in some patients where the disease is very severe, you have to go in and surgically intervene. This invention will help the glaucoma patients who suffer from this very severe form of the disease from going blind eventually. Besides grooming a new generation of researchers, Singapore's science and engineering education has also enabled young people to pursue their dreams in other ways. Eric Sandersham loved mathematics so much that he pursued it without a specific career in mind. That was more than 20 years ago. Today, he has made a name for himself as a business analytics advisor. He analyzes data and provides critical insights to redesign and improve business processes. His clients, ranging from manufacturers to retailers, turn to him to turn data into profits for them. One of the things uh, that, that the mathematics, and particularly in the, 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 where I was doing algebra and logic, was very good was allowing me to frame problems. Because that's, that's all we do all day, solving theorems, finding more elegant ways to prove it. And so your brain tends to, to see things very quickly, right? And you need to find the simplest path or the shortest path uh, and hit the objective quickly. Uh, so that has served me very well in terms of being able to deconstruct problems uh, to sort of get to the heart of things. My master's in statistics was actually very useful getting into the space of uh, predictive analytics, right? Whether it's forecasting and, you know, human beings are actually quite predictable. Eric spent 18 years working in Citibank before he set up his data analytics training and consultancy firm in 2013. He tried his hand at advertising, accounting, 
finance, market analysis and even marketing for the bank. After gathering all these varied experiences, he built his career and reputation in business analytics, a field that marries decision science, business and technology. What I'm really passionate about is solving problems. Today, the world is very complex, right? Uh, and so even the best of CEOs need inf information, they need data to guide their decisions. And so we position ourselves really as uh, using information to make evidence-based decisions, improving the decision process, uh, improving the, the management process around, uh, you know, making the right, the right call. For Jean Chan, her mechanical and aerospace engineering degree from NTU landed her a dream job. She now works for Science Singapore, a company that repairs and develops aircraft engine components. Here, she analyzes the designs of plane engine parts and advises on the best repair methods to ensure aviation safety. I like to travel since I'm young, so I find it a very enchanting, very special experience. So um, I have a lot of questions every time I fly on an airplane. More and more people are getting around on aircrafts, so aviation safety, I find it is very important. These are engineering aspects that where we can prevent accidents from happening. Jean has been working at Science for more than two years. Yet, it feels like her learning journey has just started. She enrolled herself in a part-time Master's in Aeronautical Science program in 2015 to grow her knowledge. The workplace has so many years of experience by the people in front, the pioneers in this industry, and there's really so much to learn and cannot be done in, a lot, in the five years in universities. I have to try to keep up with all these advancing technologies, all these new repair methods that people in the industry came up with that is written after the textbooks are published. They've pursued their own dreams and paths. They've contributed in different ways. Singapore's dynamic education in science and engineering has created unlimited opportunities for them. In turn, they've helped place Singapore's inventions on the world map. Brought to you by the National University of Singapore in celebration of SG50.